Weiss was uh, started by Feli in uh, 1987 as part of the, the approved by the Senate with the USB. It's a, it's a creative space. It's a creative space for everyone, for dancing, music and, and the art. When I was appointed to come here, I had already had some uh, some ideas. My uh, background is in anthropology. I'm a, a trained anthropologist, uh, so very, very much interested in uh, in our cultures and uh, the, uh, especially creativity. The idea is to create a space that is specific, that is ours, within the global. Uh, a system, a place where people can come and uh, relax. It's a you know, welcoming uh, place, a place that, uh, uh, that is conducive for, uh, for creativity, for cultural creativity. This place, I think everybody likes it. You know, when, when you set a set of rules and you let everybody be you know, open and it brings everybody together. The design of the place that the Pelly was designing it is sort of like, uh, if you look from that way, from the Pure, it's sort of like a wave. Uh, it should be, yeah, it's like the waves, and the other side sort of the wave breaks, if you can see that. And it's open so that people can just look and come, so that you, you, you sort of close it up and people won't just walk past it. It is the reason why it's open, so that people can just come and, and inquire, and if they want to join, they join. It's, it's all about um, transparency. Come and have a look at our stuff. You can stand even from the road and look at our... It was open space initially because we didn't have the money for, uh, for walls. And when people like the open space and then, the, you know, uh, and then it occurred to me that this is the Pacific, uh, kind of space. The Ocean Center functions like a, I'd, I'd, I'd say it's, it functions like a typical Pacific village where every, everybody is linked to each other, the communal um, system. Um, for instance, where I come from, you have someone who, who does, who composes music and dance for the community. You have someone who, who is in charge of, of security, um, someone who's in charge of um, who, who lets everybody know when to plant and when not to plant. You know, you have all those things. And, and that, that it, it's a similar thing with the Ocean Center where everybody is, is uh, linked together. Also, you see, in the Pacific, there, there is very little privacy. Uh -huh is that uh, uh, there's very little uh, privacy. Uh, uh, people are thrown in together all the time. You can't uh, do things in private it's until you, you get on. And the, the houses are small. Huh? I mean, our houses uh, are normally uh, small. So people spend most of their time outside or as, uh, you know, um, in, in the villages uh, uh, and things. And that is important. Another important thing is that we, uh, when we develop the space, we also um, had the idea that to run this place, you have to run it in the way that our communities are. We still have to, uh, you know, to swim in the global world. Eh? But there's an area, there's a space that is ours. We must create a uh, space that are ours. Um, space is, is, for me, is not just a place. Um, it's more than that. It, 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 it includes the land, the sea, the sky. Um, in my culture, it includes those who have gone before me. My, my line. Space, um, as we understand it, is um, the physical space 
and the intellectual space or the spiritual space? When I say space, um, what I mean is it gives me the, the opportunity to put out what, what is in me, what I believe that I have come up from. Um, in that sense, in the, in, in, the, in the mental or intellectual space, is that everything is open. Um, Pacific Island life has always been open. It's always been free to give ideas and free to share things. Nothing's ever held or else they die. Uh, for me, it's not just a space, a, a place, an area where you can go. And I think that, that is one thing that the Ocean Center um, provides. Now, in the physical sense, when, it, when we're talking about integration here at the Oceania Center, there is dance, there is music, there is sculpture, and there is painting. These are the four main areas of the Oceania Center. Um, for instance, my musicians are all painters, and some of them are dancers as well. Um, the painters are dancers, musicians as well, and the dancers some of them have, you know, have done paintings um, and are also dancers and some of them are musicians as well. So it's, it's a, uh, the whole place is linked up. It's sort of like, a, almost like a village concept when you learned how to do crafts. You sort of watch and you act a little bit and then you watch other people doing it, but you teach them sort of guide them in techniques, but the creativity is left to each individual person to be creative, because everybody is more like, you know, come from different areas, different background. They have their own stories. They can express themselves in that way. I come from uh, Fulang Island in the Lao group. My island, uh, the island of Fulang is well known for, they are the best uh, covers in, in Fiji. Most of the people of Fulang are are doing carving in Suva and also in the western side, in Nandi and Lautoka, and all the resorts in the Mamanuda group, and you know, those are the people from Fulang. Uh, this one is, uh, is a traditional one. Uh, the title of this one is Turangani Koro. Turangani Koro is the head of the village. So he's blowing the corn shells, calling people to come to work or, or for a meeting. Yeah, that's what he's. What he's doing is blowing the corn shells. But nowadays, uh, the young generation are trying to break away from the traditional, uh, like canoes and bowls. Like what I am doing here at the Oceania Center, I'm doing, I'm trying to do some contemporary art and uh, breaking away from the traditional. Uh, you know. This particular painting, I'm paying tribute to to, my, to our chiefs. Uh, I, as a Fijian, I'm paying tribute to my chiefs. Not just my particular immediate uh, chief, but to all chiefs in Fiji, the genuine chiefs, not, uh, not uh, the rest. At this, at this moment, at the present date, our chiefs are not able to deliver to us the grassroots, here yeah, at the grassroots level, what we need of them. For us, our chiefs represent our culture, our land, and everything about, everything about us is represented by the chiefly figure. Like, there are limitations now to what they can deliver, what they can say. There are a lot of limitations enforced upon them. As a choreographer, I like to be open to new ideas from the dancers. Um, sometimes I may ask them uh, to sit down and discuss about an issue and what what movements come out from them. And then from there, sometimes I can modify. You know, it inspires me. You know, I see some other move in that. And so it inspires me to do something else with it. So I'm very open to new ideas, very open to the other dancers. I invite them to um, put in their ideas because I want them to feel, have a feel of the dance not only being mine, but that they also own the dance. A 
lot of my designs is what I'm living through right now. For that one, the, uh, the twisted scepter, it's, um, I, I feel for my people. I feel for my, my culture, my land, because the situation is going on now. Yeah. It's twisted. The political situation is going on now is twisting because this, the, this, the, the, um, the kin this, the, the, that war club is a symbol of chiefly power and dignity. We have created, we have invented a new instrument, a new musical instrument. Uh, uh, you know, and people don't realize how important it is. You know, uh, Calvin has invented, and we've introduced to the world a completely new uh, uh, musical instrument. I think the main thing about this instrument is it can be tuned, it can be transposed, so I can actually play different notes out of it. It's not only just stuck to that eight, the seven, seven notes, which is usually what is done, where once they cut the bamboos, that's it. You can't play any other tunes, or any other notes. But with this, we develop it so that it can be transposed. So I can actually tune it down and actually tune the pipes up and um, play different um, pieces with it. But it's still in the developing stages. We're still trying to, to develop it so that it can be better. Um, there's one production called Nafanua, and it's talking about the central theme there is the environment. In that production, um, we had the sculptor who built the set. The huge backdrop that was um, uh, uh, used for that production was done by the painters. The music for the whole production was done by the music department, Calvin Rory. And then, of course, the dance was done by us. I worked on uh, Legends and... and, and uh Myths. This one is called Maui. In Maui, I think in all Pacific yeah, Polynesian islands have Maui in the, as one of their gods. Uh, tongue and talks in metaphors a lot. Uh, we, our love song is always metaphorical. We, we like to beat up, beat around the bush a lot. Uh, we don't say I love you directly. We sort of like uh, go around. <laughs> It's hard being an artist yeah, in, a, in, in the Pacific Islands. Yeah. It, you'll be successful in terms of meeting a lot of people. You know, you tend to know what's going on in the art um, world. Uh, you get to travel, you know, with your art. Uh, but uh, if you, in terms of financial stuff, the Pacific Islands needs to build its art. It's, yeah, those spaces. You do you have the creative space, and then you need the spaces that touch the selling. I'm talking about the galleries, the, the marketing, you know, because when, when, when I go, when we go well, I mean, overseas, you tend to know that the galleries compete for the artists and they market them, the artists, you know. Uh, we need to, uh, to develop, to express ourselves within our, uh, you know, uh, in our contemporary situation, rooted, our ideas be rooted in our histories and in, in our traditions. Not to recreate them, but to, uh, to use these things as for inspirations. Now, to do that, you have to have the right space for it. Um, from there, you create something else in the unknown something else in the future that we don't know about. Um, but we are drawing from inspirations from the past to create who, who we are and make sense of what we are in this environment. Hopefully that will in itself be, be transcended into, into the future. It's 
more like we're also recreating, not so much recreating, but reinterpreting and translating whatever we had in the past um, to work with us in the future, in, in the present. And then hopefully, you know, we'll provide some suggestions, um, syntheses of stuff in the future that any, everybody and everyone can work and inspire from. So in a sense, we're in the history making process. I firmly believe that uh, that there are areas that we, only ourselves, that we have to send our standards and measure ourselves by our own canons. What uh, uh, colonialism did, uh, you know, the biggest, one of the main things that they did was to, uh, 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 to say all our cultures, you know, everything was bad. Mm -hmm. And then they introduced standards. And we still uh, uh, go by that. <laughs>